So generally, you can look at this. It's quite interesting. You can um, think of it as an, uh, you know, as the data is contained in an ellipsoid, right? And the axis of the maximum variability or variance, it's the, um, it's basically uh, the main direction of the um, ellipsoid, right? So how can we find this? Now I want you to think mathematically, like how can we possibly discover or uh, find this projection line? So going back into simple mathematical, like looking at simple mathematical tools, let's look at this. For example, let's say maybe we can use the mean, right, to find this line. Maybe we take the average of all data points and somehow we might be able to capture this variability. So let's look at this. For example, if we have these three points, okay, and then I want to compute the mean. So the mean of these three points is like, you know, we just uh, average their, these three features or these three values. So 1 plus 2 plus 6, so we get 3. So then we discover that what we call the mean of uh, the data it's, or the point of balance, which is located right there. Okay? So here, if we look at another example, so this is case 1. If we look at this example, now we have two data sets and we want to know uh, we want to project them maybe, uh, you know, we want to use the mean to be able to identify this axis. If we look at those, right, what do you guys know this? That the mean of the first data set or the first uh, population composed of three samples, it's right there, right? But for the second data set, what do you know this? It's also the same, right? It's exactly the same. So here, these are completely different, but they still have the same mean. So probably using the mean is not the right metric, okay, to find the, uh, to identify this projection uh, line, right? So then the next option, what is it? What do we have in stats? So mean, then we can look at probably the variance, right? So for example, let's look at the variance here. So what do we have? We have these samples. And then we compute their variance. So if you guys remember the variance here, the mean is like, um, it's like um, centered, the data is centered at zero. So the variance, you take the first um, feature, right, minus the mean, but here it's centered at zero. So uh, you subtract zero, but still one. So, and you square them and you sum all of them. So we have one plus zero plus one. So that is two third. But if we look, compute the variance for the second data, what will we get? So we have basically, uh, so the distance from the mean, okay, so it's 5 squared plus 0 plus 5 squared, right? Divided by what? The number of points, so 3. So that would be 50 divided by 3. What do you guys know this when you compare here the variance of this these, uh, the first, you know, data set and the variance of the second data set. So obviously, this number tells you that these, uh, the second data set varies, like, um, has a much higher variance than the first one, okay? It's more spread out. And we can see that. Now we're, you guys can feel that we're heading in the right direction, right? So the variance is a better metric to use to identify this projection line because it can capture it can capture the variability of the data, okay? Now, so here's the thing. So both sets have uh, the same mean, okay? The mean measures, uh, measure does not tell them apart. However, the variance with respect to the mean, uh, it, is, it is a good uh, metric to capture the, uh, you know, like basically the, um, the spread of the data. Now, let's look at these cases. What do you guys know this for these two? So if we have these two, two different data sets, okay? So the, the, the red data set and the green data set, right? Now, we have two features, the X feature and the Y feature, right? So we compute the variance uh, along the X axis. We compute the variance along the Y axis, right? So here, just, you know, to clarify, so here are the, these are, oops, two units, okay? So and this is one unit, okay? So for the X, we have, uh, this is the center of 
uh, the data. So we have basically 2 squared plus 0 plus 2 squared, right? So that's the variance along the x-axis. And we get also the variance along the y, um, the y axis. And here it's just 1 squared plus 1 squared. So we can see that the data is more spread out um, along the x-axis, right? But if we compute this also for the second data, what do you guys know this? So let's do this. So along the x-axis, what is the variability along um, um, the variance along the x-axis? So it's the same, right? We have 2 squared plus 0 plus 2 squared, right? So that's the distance from the mean divided by 3. So it's exactly the same. And then the y variance, what we have, we have exactly the same too. So it's like, you know, these two units. So it's like we take the distance of each point from the mean so and square it. And this is two third. Now, one thing about these this scenario is the variance is good. It tells us something about uh, how much the data is scattered, but it did not. It does not tell us in which direction. So these here, if we only rely on the variance, we will consider these two as exactly the same, but they're not the same. They're different. Okay. So in that case, if you guys remember, uh, we saw covariance in lecture three, so we're going to use the covariance. And here, how do we define the covariance? In a very simple way. So if I put all the data in the same uh, coordinate system, what do you guys know this? How can I, what makes these samples different, basically? They're signs. They're signs, very good. So. Another another reflection. So what do you notice? If we multiply, right, for example, these two features or coordinates, we will get negative 2 and negative 2 here, right? And if we multiply these two, like just the coordinates, that these two features, we'll get 2 and here, negative 2 times negative 1, that's a 2. So basically, I know that these guys are positive, okay? And I know that the other guys right here, the red ones are like, are negative. So by simply, this is a very powerful concept, by simply multiplying like the coordinates or the features, computing the product, we will be able to tell them apart. And this is the concept of covariance, right? So it's um, the covariance of two features. And in this case, we have only two-dimensional space. Now, let's define this uh, mathematically. So you guys, if you guys remember, what shall we put here? So the covariance matrix belongs to what? So here we have a... Uh, each sample belongs to R2, right? So we have two features, and we know that the covariance matrix, the dimensionality is, its dimensionality is basically uh, the number of features times the number of features, so D times D, and here D equals 2, so we have like a 2 by 2 matrix. So in the first um, quadrant, what do we put here? If you remember, we put the variance, right? So these are the features, feature 1, feature 2, feature 1, and feature 2. And right here, we put the variance of feature the first feature. So remember, this is, I call them x and y, x and y. So the variance of x. And here, we put the variance of y. And we have those values, right? So the values are these two, right? But then what, sh what, can I, what should we put right here? So, so we need to basically, so remember this is a centered data, so it makes things very easy for us, right? So here to compute the, um, the covariance, so this will be covariance of y and x, and the other one is the covariance of x and y. Okay, so now the covariance of y and x using the red data, what do we have? So if you guys remember how we compute it, so we simply multiply 
the, uh, we take the first sample, we multiply its, these two features, the x and the y, so, so that's negative 2, and then we sum all of them up, right? So that's how we compute the covariance, plus 0 times 0, that's a 0, and then we have 2 times um, uh, negative 1, so that's negative 2, and we divide by what? The number of points. So that is basically the covariance of y with x. And then if we do the same, you will notice that here in this case it is symmetrical. So we will have minus 4 divided by 3. Now if we look at the green one, so now it's quite uh, simple. So we have the variance of x and the variance of y. So the variance of x, it's uh, the same. So eight, we have um, 8 third and then 2 thirds. So, okay. And for the covariance, we just multiply those and sum them. Okay. So we will have 2 plus 2, that's 4 third and 4 third. And here you can see that here we have a negative covariant, like correlation between these two and here are positive, and it tells us about the direction. So now